This is the Caribou News. I am Clifton James. Grenada is adopting United States Centers for Disease Control, CDC guidelines, to release from quarantine people who enter the country and, after spending 10 days in quarantine, have had negative results for both the rapid and PCR COVID-19 tests. The first set of returning nationals to be released is the more than 100 cruise ship workers who returned on June the 14th on board MS Marina. They will be followed by some yachters who entered the island on the same day or the day before the cruise ship workers arrived. The CDC also said asymptomatic people who have tested positive for COVID-19 should wait 10 days after the positive test before resuming normal activities. As Grenada awaits the reopening of Morris Bishop International Airport on 01 July, uncertainty remains as to which airlines will actually be flying to the airport. British Airways have cancelled all nine flights in August to Grenada and September flights are under review. Virgin Atlantic are planning to return to Grenada in October. There has been no date set for flights to Trinidad and Barbados, whilst Liat have sent home staff for a further three months, and Caribbean Airlines await a decision on when the Piaco International Airport in Trinidad will reopen. There has been much frustration as passengers booked on international flights either to or from Barbados with absolutely no way of reaching Grenada for the next month. In Jamaica, criminal charges against George Williams, the mentally ill man who spent 50 years in prison without a trial, has been dropped. The charges were dropped Wednesday when Williams appeared in the St. Catherine Parish Court. I am feeling so elated right now. After 50 years, he is finally freed, an emotional Pam- Pamela Green Williams niece told Luke News after outside the courthouse. Williams, 71, was represented by attorney Isat Buchanan, who was hired by human rights group Stand Up for Jamaica to seek his release. This is certainly what I like to call swift justice, so I'm very happy, Buchanan said. Adding, I know that this all happened in seven days. This is what we want for our justice system. There are many of our brothers and sisters still in there, and we need to assist them like we did for George, he added. The Saharan dust is darkening skies in Jamaica and across the Caribbean. The dust plume blowing across the North Atlantic from Africa is nothing new, but experts say the current episode is arguably the worst in decades. Locally, it has caused normally blue skies to appear brown and turned the sun into a dust ball. Shareholder governments of the near bankrupt regional airline Liat are to hold a virtual meeting on Saturday amid reports that there are plans afoot to sell the airline. St. Vincent and the Grenadines Prime Minister, Dr. Ralph Gonzalez, says Saturday's virtual meeting will discuss a number of issues facing the Antigua-based carrier, including the impact of the coronavirus, which has had on the struggling airline. On the table will be an idea to sell the airline, but who will buy it is the big question. At a meeting in Barbados on Monday, directors of the Castrap airline met to discuss the future of the airline. There are plans to sell five of Liat's aircraft and to cut the current schedule by 50%. Antigua and Barbuda Prime Minister Gaston Brown says whilst he was not privy to any report regarding the possible winding up of the airline, he too, like his St. Vincent and Grenadines colleague, has been examining the likely impact of COVID-19 on the finances of the airline. Liat was forced to shut down its passenger commercial flights in March when the regional government closed their borders as part of the efforts to curb the spread of the virus that has killed thousands of people and infected millions of others worldwide. Liat shareholder governments are Antigua and Barbuda, Barbados, Dominica, Grenada and St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Venezuela's rival leaders, President Nicolas Maduro and his Western-backed opponent, Juan Guaido, began a legal tug-of-war on Monday over $1 billion of the country's gold stashed 
deep under the Bank of England in London. In a High Court hearing due to last four days, the Venezuelan central bank, controlled by Maduro's government, is seeking an order to force the Bank of England to release the bullion that, like many countries, it stores there for safekeeping. Nick Verniel, QC, says as far as Western Europe is concerned, for the most part, there are full diplomatic relations with the Maduro government. It holds roughly 400,000 bars of gold worth more than 200 billion pounds, that's 250 billion US dollars, in its vaults under the city of London and is the second largest keeper of gold in the world after the New York Federal Reserve, according to its website. The dispute over Venezuela's gold began in May 2018 when Maduro secured re-election in a vote the opposition coalition boycotted and called a sham. Afterwards, Boris Johnson, then the British Foreign Minister, said we may have to tighten the economic screw on Venezuela. You're up to date. Carib World News. Hello, Boss Mice, contact Carib Jet. 439 4444 or carriagejet.com.